open us up in prayer today. Sure. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Father God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we magnify your name. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for everything that you have in store for each and every one of the chaplains on this call. Father God, we ask for a special blessing, God, if there's any sick among us. Father God, we thank you for the two brothers that will bring forth uh, any lesson on today. God, we ask for a special blessing for the UAW. God, we pray for all our leaders, God. God, we pray, Lord God Jesus, that you will continue to order their steps. We love you. We praise you and we magnify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, yes. And uh, so, someone that would like to volunteer to read uh, Article 41 from the UAW Constitution. The foundation of the UAW chaplaincy program is built on Article 41, Section 2 of the United UAW Constitution, which states, it shall be the duty of each member to render aid and assistance to brother or sister members in case of illness, death, or distress, and in every way equate her or himself as a loyal and devoted member of the International Union. Amen. 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 And with that, I'd like to introduce our international staff. Bill Eady, are you on the line with us today? Bill Eady. Okay. All right. If he joins us later, we will certainly allow him to speak. Jerry Carson. Good morning. Good morning, Connie. Thank you. I want to bring greetings from President Ray Curry and Vice President Director Chuck Browning and the entire International Executive Board. We want to thank you, chaplains, for all you do in your place of work in our union, in the community, being the salt and the light, meeting people where they are, and loving on them. We can never say thank you enough. And I just, I want to. I'm going to turn it over. I, I back to you, Connie and Elder. I'm I'm excited about hear what Brother Robert Goldston is going to bring to us, and and then Doug Woolard also today. So um, I'm going to turn it back over. But love you, chaplains. Uh, we were we was told by Jesus, the harvest is much, labors are few, and I always think about that kingdom building. We don't get tired of doing good, and you know the civil rights and labor movement is a struggle it's so is kingdom building but jesus overcame he overcame and he made the way i'll turn it back over to you connie love you all right love you too jerry amen and with that elder taylor uh good morning bailey good morning sister connie um we want to thank all the chaplains this morning for the work that you do um we're going to have a uh, change in our formats going forward. Let me do this. Uh, uh, let us pray. Let us pray. Father of all men, give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to do what is right. Unite all people in the solidarity of human brotherhood and enrich them with the splendor of human diversity. Light the way so truth may guide us and we may find our way through the dangers and difficulties of hatred, misunderstanding, and war. Amen. Amen. Um, going forward, Walter Ruth of Prayer, this is his prayer. I want to thank Ken Thomas for sending this to me. We are so close. We have been given so many opportunities to be a resource for this great union. And we can't afford to drop the ball. Number one, Jesus won't let us drop the ball if we do things 
decent and in order. The structure to what we do on the international level, especially now that Jerry Carson have this assignment to try to connect the dots and try to make sure what we say at the international, what we do at the international, trickle down first to the local, to the region, to the international. We really can't control what a lot of the locals do because I know we just can't. But what we can do is ask our regional coordinators to be a voice for our local union. And we can ask Jerry Carson to be that voice for the region. I say that because I'm just gonna get real. We can't afford we can't afford to have nobody getting so personal that the Lord told them to do something contradictory to what the Lord told us to tell y'all to do. I just thought I would throw that out because the Bible even tells you in Jeremiah where the prophets were saying the Lord said. And Jeremiah had to say, hey, fellas, the Lord ain't said none of that. That's what y'all want to do. So I read this prayer by Walter Ruther. I thank Ken Thomas for bringing it to light. And uh, we're going to proceed that way with our opening. Connie going to keep doing what she's doing. She's going to introduce our international leaders. And uh, we're going to do this prayer for a couple of months. And uh, we're in teaching mode. So bear with us. And right now, uh, Robert Ghostin, him and I talk regularly. And I trust Robert. Jerry Carson trusts Robert. We would not have Robert uh, with the responsibility that he has if we didn't trust him. When we go to Black Lake, I didn't go this year, but Robert can testify, Jerry can testify. When the people hand Elder Taylor the keys to the property, Elder Taylor give those keys to Robert Ghoston because I trust Robert Ghoston. We have some conversation where um, we don't agree with everything, but you know what we do do? And all our getting, we get an understanding. And we do that to benefit this national program. So without any further ado, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Robert Ghost, and I ask that you hold back your questions until we are done with the uh, presentation for the day. Uh, Brother Robert Ghostin is the chaplaincy coordinator out of Region 1. So God bless you, Robert. We turn it into your hands. Thank you, Elder. And uh, thank you for that great introduction and to knowing that you and Jerry, trust me. Uh, I appreciate that because I trust your leadership. Uh, first of all, we was talking about the things decent and in order. So I want to address that before I get into uh, the word that the Lord wanted me to share with you today. And that is, uh, as Elder just said, and it brings me right into that. If you have any questions, hold your questions. But everybody knows if you go to the reactions on your screen, there's hand claps, there's a hand up raised and all of that. So if you have a question, that's what we should be using. 
We should never use, God said that we do things decent and in order. We should never use, excuse me, Herb, excuse me, Elder, excuse me, Jerry, I have a question. We, that's not a professional way to be on the internet. If you have a question, send Elder a text, send, put your, raise your hand. I do, you know, they put me in charge of IT. I see it all. And when I see your hand, if nothing's, if they don't notice it, I will mention that there's a hand up. And that's how we do things decent and in order because it doesn't look good on us. It doesn't look good on the UAW when somebody blurts something out and Elder has to take control. Jerry has to take control. Bill has to take control and say, nope, hold that. You never have, we never have to see that on our recordings. If we do things decent and in order, and it's for us, we're the chaplains. We're the ones that's high above everyone else. They look at us that we always got to do it right. We always got to be perfect because we're God's children and we have to build the kingdom and we have to do it in love. So the question that I have for you today, how many of you can use some more money? You can take your stuff off mic. Just I just need to get. How many can use some more money? I can. There you I go. can. I can. I can only. I need I only need one. I can. So here's the answer for you to get more money. The way to get more money is we we never have enough teaching on tithing. Ain't that something? It's the tithe. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. When we pray for healing for someone, the harvest we get back is healing. When we bless somebody financially, the harvest we get back is financial. You can't put an apple seed in the ground and expect an orange. You can't get it. So let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33. And this is out of the King James Version. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things. What is these things? It's the new cars you want. It's the new shoes that the lady wants. It's the, it's the new cars. It's, it's all of the things that this earth has. He said that he has, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That's what the scripture says, but it wasn't for him. He created it for us. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for what? The just. And that's not in the church. And that's what we kind of stop looking for it in the church. It's out there in the, in the neighborhoods. It's out there in the dope dealers. It's out there in everybody that's perverting God's word. That's how we get back what belongs to us. Kingdom building. Uh, Acts 20, verse 20, 35. I have shown you all things, how that so labors you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The difference, when we receive something, we get excited. It touches our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. But when we give something, it's a warmness that comes inside. That's the spirit of God. That's being just like God. Luke 6, 38. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For this is the same measure that you mirror with all. It shall be measured unto you. Give that the only, give is that the only word in yours that, that belongs to us. Give 
the whole that whole scripture is God speaking. But give is the only word that belongs to us. He tells us to give, and it shall be given unto us. And, and, and that's 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 a harvest. Whenever you give, you have a different harvest. You give over here for the Salvation Army. You give over here for the community. You give on your job. You give for adoptive family. You give in prayer. All of those are different harvests that you're going to be expecting. And when you need a harvest, you never know where it's going to come from. But if you got harvest in the ground, if you didn't sow in good ground, you can only reap a good harvest. Mark 4, 14, it says, the sower sows the word. What is the word? Healing is the word. So I can expect to be healed all of the time. Salvation is the word. So I can expect to be saved. Is financial in the word? Yes, I can expect to be blessed. Let's take an orange. I'm going to have to use my brothers on this one. Let's take an orange. Let's cut it in four slices. We're going to give one to Brother Bill. We're going to give a piece to Brother Jerry. We're going to give a piece to Elder Herb. Take the last piece for yourself. Now tell Brother Bill, Brother Jerry, and Elder Herb to enjoy their slice. But watch out for the seeds. Now you can take a piece and bite into the seed in that slice. The brothers who watch out for the seed enjoy the sweet slice of orange, but the seed was so bitter. So remember, anything that is sweet belongs to the Lord. Anything that's bitter, anything that's sweet belongs to you. Sorry about that. Anything that's bitter belongs to the Lord. See, there's something what we should eat. Always remember, everything is sweet to you is yours, but everything is bitter belongs to the Lord. Stop eating your seed. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Brother Amen. Robert. Thank you, Brother Robert. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Robert. Amen, amen. amen. Um, it is important that we do understand the meaning and the understanding of um, giving. Because the more we give, <laughs> the more we, we receive. Hallelujah. Yeah, Robert, you're on point. And uh, uh, when we give, our obedience we receive obedience from others let me let me throw this at you robert i'm gonna pick it back on you the reason the reason why a lot, a lot of things happens in today's world is because of the seed we plant amen if i'm standing with my love toward my enemies, I'm always going to have enemies. I'm always going to have them. The more that I give, if I give you the best that I can give you, and let's just say if I give you the truth, Yes. Sometimes it hurts me, but that seed is going to prosper in due season. Amen. Your time, your talent, your treasure, and your temple. I belong to God. Amen, amen. 
Thank you, Robert. I'm going to come back to Robert Gosen uh, because that's something that's I need him to do this morning. But he was obedient, and we needed to hear that. Uh, um, Brother uh, Doug Willard, you got five minutes. Are you with me this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on with it. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, that's on this conference call, and I want to thank the chaplain to the committee and uh, all those who participate, because you truly feed me when I hear the word of God coming out of the mouth of all you chaplains and those who are on the chaplaincy committee. So I want to say thanks to you. Uh, my topic is going to be on one accord in Jesus' name. On one accord, uh, I wanted to ask the definition of one accord, because back in the day when the Lord brought this to me, uh, it came to me in the, in the text as I was reading. And then later on that month, uh, Elder Herb came up with an August that we would do on one accord. We would read Psalms. I said, well, look at this. He said that we're going to do this on one accord. So I know the Lord was talking to me because I was just read that scripture maybe two or three weeks prior to that. And so now I understand that when people come together on one accord to praise God, God is happy. God is delightful. But I wanted the definition of one accord. And I asked my brother and I asked my niece what they thought that word meant. And one said the one that we come to a conclusion together. Uh, collectively, we come together uh, in agreement. But I uh, looked it up in the Western Dictionary, and the Bible and the and the dictionary points out when people gather together unanimously, unanimous, unanimously, with one accord, with unanimously agreement that we are in one agreement, one accord. And when I look at the things that we do here on our chaplaincy committee, that on the first Wednesdays, like I say, we pray. We are on one accord, praising God and giving him all the praise and glory. And on the day of the second Wednesday, we read scripture showers, the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures. We are on one accord, praising God and giving him thanks and stuff. And on third, the chaplaincy with the ladies, the chaplaincy ladies, they are gathered together on one accord, to praise God and give him thanks and glory. And then on the fourth, the retirees, they give him as a group. We praise him and give him glory. And the last one is the chaplaincy men. All these things I think God is in the light of, of the chaplaincy committee. But the thing that he has pointed out to me that what we come to agreement was the things that he put here on earth for us, that, that we live in the United States and that we are blessed to be in the United States. So we are blessed of one accord based on that constitution that we are all citizens of the United States. That constitution makes us citizens of the United States. And then we go to the UAW. And what makes us all that one together? That constitution. We all got different parts, boards, we got uh, Chevy, we got GM, but that constitution brings us together. It feeds our flesh. It provides civil liberty and it provides benefits being under the constitution, whether it's the United States constitution or whether it's the UAW constitution, because it provides benefits for our flesh. But the last thing that we come under to is that Bible. I hear us say Bible. And that Lord said, that's just a collection of books. But I made it a holy Bible. I sanctified it. And the words that you read out of this is holy. And it is spiritual. And it feeds you. So that's the things that I believe that we're all in agreement with. That under the Constitution, we are U.S. citizens. Under the Constitution of the UAW, we're all partakers of the Constitution under the uh, International Union. And under this holy Bible, we are on the foundation of Jesus Christ. He has brought us all together to be in common. So I am thankful for that, that with one accord, we are together praising and worshiping God. 
the last thing I want to talk about is the Jesus. Oh, I got to read my scriptures first. I'm sorry. I get excited and I'm sorry. Uh, I go to Acts, Acts 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. They were with one accord. Then on the two, uh, chapter 2, but, uh, I'm sorry, on chapter 2, verse 1, it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And we know what happened at the Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit filled the house and everybody was blessed that day. But then I go to, uh, this Holy Bible that I wanted to bring about is that it's for us to learn about God as it does in Second Timothy. Second uh, Timothy verses 15, 16, and 17 is that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus, all Scriptures is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for real proof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished in all things. And then I go to Jesus' name I wanted to talk about. I go to Psalms 47. Uh, Psalms 47. It says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of this book and it is written of me. This Bible, when Jesus Christ came on the scene, this Bible became our connection for the Gentiles, because prior to that, we know that the Israelites was under the God, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. But when Jesus came on the scene, he said, our father, and he brought the Gentiles and gave them great light that he is our father, that all people are accepted. There's no respect of person that all can come before God and him. And I go to Hebrews 13.8. Uh, 13.8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forevermore. And the Lord said, I bless that name for eternity because now he has given the United States and in our international our constitution all of this is on, the, I'm sorry, when God has blessed the United States with two holy days, Christmas, the birth of Christ, and Easter, the death and resurrection of Christ, that we can come to remembrance each year that someone can discover, can discover who Christ is through his birth and through his death. The Lord has given us remembrance, and this will be even after we die, that this Holy Bible will be here. And each Christmas on the 25th, they will remember the birth of Christ. And on Easter, they will remember his death and resurrection. So this scripture tells me that this, when I'm long gone, his name will continue to go on. So we are in unity and worshiping and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in closing, I know he blessed the UAW when he came up with the word solidarity. That means unity amongst the ranks. I appreciate you guys giving me this time, and I thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, my brother.